Hey guys, uh, welcome to The Camera Adds 10 Pounds. I am your host, Peter Sirs, and today I am joined by my friend, Crystal Chats, to be, to be known as Crystal Chats. Um, that's a stage name. It is. Yeah. I don't have to tell them what your real name is. No. Yeah. It's irrelevant. I didn't, I didn't know that you had changed it until like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, that's the reason because then everyone just kept butchering it and butchering it and butchering it. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to fix this. Okay. I mean, it's very hard to miss, to not pronounce chats correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, I have friends that still don't pronounce my name correctly. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Um, but uh, so this podcast, for those of you guys that may be just tuning in for the first time, um, I'm a comic comedian whatever you want to call it actually there's a difference between comic and comedian did you know that when people when 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 you ask when you tell people do you say you're a comic or a comedian i say both so go ahead and uh okay school us so um i mean i'm sure everyone's gonna have their opinions on this but a comic is more like joke teller like set up punch bam you know like like the toshes or whatever and then a comedian is more like storytelling a little bit more conversational that's supposed to be, the, I mean, like I said, everyone's going to have, yeah, go ahead. So would you say most of us are hybrids? I, I, I say I'm a comedian. Okay. I don't, I don't think I'm set up punch like hardly ever. That's true, actually. I have, I've noticed that about your material. But, okay. I mean, obviously there's funny parts as I'm telling stories, but like I don't, I just think of the things that have happened and I'm like, okay, how can I make this funny? And then, you know, it's always a work in progress on stage. I definitely think I'm a hybrid. Okay, yeah, I would mm-hmm. say so too. Yeah. Because you, you do write jokes, set up punch, mm-hmm. but you have stories too. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so my podcast, so Crystal doesn't even know what uh, the podcast is about, <laughs> um, which is great. Um, so me as, as, a, as a comedian, um, but also someone that's very much into like health and fitness, mm. I have taken it upon myself over the last few years um, to really share the fact that I'm not like most comics in that I'm not sleeping till two o'clock every day. I'm not out getting hammered every night and not taking care of like I work out and I eat well. And I know you are someone that's also very much into that. Um, So what I want to try to do is to bring light to everybody so that know that we're not all lazy and people that are just self-destructive, not taking care of ourselves. There are a lot of people that actually do take care of themselves, that do work out and do eat well, um, because it's not easy in our lifestyle. Exactly. Um, as a comic or a comedian, whatever, um, you know, we spend a lot of time on the road, driving to shows, going to mics, you know, being in comedy clubs every night. And when you're just getting started, a lot of us are not making a lot of money. <laughs> not a lot of money. <laughs> right. So, and that's, and that, that, that's actually, I haven't talked about that yet, but mm-hmm. that's a thing that is also very real. I, I mean, I kind of touched on it um, on the first podcast, but um, we don't always get fed when we're doing shows. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes just like, oh, you get a meal, you're like, oh, shit, well, like, awesome. I get free food, Mm -hmm. but it's not always the best food. Mm -hmm. And like for me, while it is hard to turn down free food, if it's not healthy, a lot of times I'm still going to turn it down Mm -hmm. and I'd rather pay for a health, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. But I get that's, that's a very good point about us not having a lot of money. Um, so actually let's just go back a little bit. Um, tell everyone a little bit about where you're from, all that stuff. Yeah, hi guys. Yeah, I'm Crystal Chats, um, and I, I'm really excited about this. I, I, I'm super excited about talking about health and art at the same time, and how we relate the two. Um, I am. I just got started again, probably a little over a year ago in comedy. Uh, Peter and I have been friends for almost ten years now. Uh, because I, I did comedy when I first moved to L.A. I was a little bit more heavy in the acting side of things. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, life kind of just put me in a chokehold. And I did, um, uh, I, I, I steered away from the arts for several years. And um, luckily, the universe permitted me to have a second chance. And I'm really excited about that because I'm super hungry. 
Pun intended. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Super hungry right now. Um, and um, yeah, so, you know, I... Um, I'm also, I, I got my name from my podcast that I haven't been um, completely, uh, I have a bunch of episodes, but I'm, yeah, yeah. I haven't been on it lately. Um, but yeah, I haven't been doing too much of the acting. I've actually just been more strictly comedy um, lately, which I've, I've actually really, really been enjoying. And um, uh, it's funny because I was just having a conversation before I came here with one of my friends. Um, their friendship ended because one of uh, my buddies... Um, I won't say where, but um, he bombed. Uh-huh. And basically when he walked up to his table, one of um, the other comedians was all, man, bro, you bombed. And it was just like really negative energy. So and, and I feel like um, if you're not careful who you hang around with in comedy, you can definitely be around some bad seeds. I mean, of course. Right. So, but I, I've, I've been so lucky. I, I just moved back to L.A. from Orange County. Um, that's part of the reason why I said the universe chokeholded me because um, I went there in a relationship. Um, Can't but, do that, guys. No, Jump but but I will say <laughs> the comedians that I met in the OC have been awesome. Like yeah. um, my, I would say my comedy crew is this um, lady named um, shout out Dr. Layla Ali. I know Layla. Mm, yeah, right. Um, she did Ice House with us and Viet Nguyen, uh-huh. and we're just this odd trio. You know, this pharmacist, this. You know, Vietnamese student, and then me. Um, but she's a real pharmacist, right? Oh yeah, like that's her job. Well, no, she's um, between jobs right now. She's legit, like uh, she is a legit pharmacist, but right now she's not working. Okay. So um, yeah, maybe, good for her. Maybe someone listening can give her a job. Right. <laughs> well, her all her material, if it's right, funny enough, is about yeah, yeah. how it's awful being a pharmacist. I bet. So um, let's. So that I, I mm-hmm. want to actually um, so. You started comedy, because I mm-hmm. feel like we actually started right around the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, I started six years ago, almost seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you stopped. You started longer than that, dude. We met. You, no. you, you know no. I, Do you know how we met? I don't think you actually remember how we met. I know it had to have been at a mic. No. Where? Not at a mic. What? Uh, so, well, whatever. Uh, so, uh, you actually... <laughs> I asked you if there wasn't anything that wasn't off limits, and you said we're good. Uh, you you played lingerie basketball with my ex girlfriend. Oh and my that's god! How we met. No, I, yeah. I I have a picture of it. No, the nothing's off limits. <laughs> I, I actually looked it up the other day to see. I was like, are there still pictures online? No, I'm still friends with some of those girls on yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Oh my god! I mean, that's how we met. Yeah. Oh my, that's so crazy. That's how we met, and then I feel like there was like some parties and stuff that we went to and stuff like right around like because they were like pushing you guys to go out and promote so, the brand. And. I was really high the other day. <laughs> and I, I literally thought um, if someone, uh, it was a really stupid joke. I was writing and I was like, uh, how would you describe your personality? And I and I was like, maybe my punchline should be lingerie basketball. You know, because it's like I am kind of girly, but at the same time I'm like a tomboy. For sure. Um, yeah. Right. And so I, I remember I texted to my, my one of my writing partners and I was like, what do you think of this? And he was like, I don't get it. <laughs> so <laughs> is it still? Do they? St- I don't even no. know if it's still a thing. Well, that's why I looked it up because I was like, do they still do this? And it was just our they pictures. Did it for like a, I think one more season, I think because uh, we she and I broke up right. I think like it would have been a lot funnier if they would have gotten like really like I'm talking about beautiful unathletic women to play. And it was just like bad. But and that, then, that's kind of what it was. No, there was too many girls who there were, were too some serious girls that were about good. the basketball. Yeah. Do, were you? Do you remember? Were you? Because you were on her team, right? Yeah. But then you got traded or something, didn't you get? Tr- or I did don't you know. Quit? Yeah, I was just like, dude. I was like, this is. It was just too much driving and practice, yeah. and there wasn't enough but money. You, and I'm like, it was pretty good money. I mean, it was decent. If, well, maybe I stopped. I got my like first check, and I was like, I'm gonna politely like withdraw I, from this. So I, I we, this is uh-huh. so my ex girlfriend uh, played laundry basketball with Crystal. <laughs> uh, you guys, they got paid. You guys didn't get paid to practice. No, but okay. Um, I think he got paid for appearances. Maybe if you had some. Yeah, um, I don't even remember what the check was. But I, I do. Oh, I remember this because like I was making most of the money in our household. But like, mm-hmm. uh, if you guys won, you got a thousand dollars each. Oh. And if you lost, you got paid five hundred dollars each. Oh wow! And so that is great money. It's not I, bad. I wish I would have stuck around. No, but they definitely gave me some sort of a check for like all the time. Yeah, leading it up was, to the game. It was. Uh, yeah, I feel like you stopped 
playing at some point. Yeah, I did. Because they did, like, I don't remember how many games they had, but I just remember, like, I would get frustrated because uh, she did not have the same work ethic that I did. Mm. And, like, I'd be like, hey, man, like, because... When this, once the season started, this is not even why I wanted the, the podcast to be, but uh, I remember... Uh, this is hilarious. I know. It's totally hilarious. But, uh, like, I've always worked out, and that's part of why I wanted to start this podcast. But, like, mm-hmm. she was not... Like, she was just naturally skinny. Okay. And, like, you know, she was a model. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm like, dude, like, let's go to the gym, like, and just practice hoops or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, I don't feel like... It. I'm like, dude, you need to... I mean, all right, like, go work out. Go do this. Like, because for me, I'm like, you could get 500 more dollars... Just mm-hmm. by winning the game. Yeah. Like, w- why wouldn't you want to practice and go for that money? Like, right. if someone told me, like, I could do a set at, you know, a comedy club and get paid $10 for doing okay or get paid $20 for killing, I'm like, all right, I'm going to fucking give my best set, yeah. you know? So it would just frustrate me. But anyway, that's where we met. Okay. But then we did re-meet. But, but that was... That was I, that 10 was years like the, ago. Yeah, that was 10 years or, ago. Well, because that yeah. was when I first... Maybe that's what happened. Because I, I literally started doing stand-up in Texas before I moved oh, here. Oh, okay. And then I moved here. Oh, that's right. Because when I moved here, I did not do comedy the first yeah, yeah. year. I didn't... Um, I just was in acting class. And then um, I watched one of my friends take a class. And I'm like, okay. This is how we're going to get into comedy. Right, because you That's were in... That's right. You were in... I didn't do comedy my first year. Did you do Greg year. Dean's comedy class? No, I did uh, LA stand-ups. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because I did meet you through somebody that did the class, and then you did one of our shows, because I used to I used oh. to book shows with, with, with Matt. Okay, and then, yeah. So I mean, and I was like, oh, I remember you from Laundry Basketball, and then... That, so. that makes sense, though, that yeah. we then... I was like, wait, because I, cause I, I, I did do my first set maybe 11 years ago because i think it was 22 but then again the first year i did not even go to a mic well it's very intimidating because you know you when i was so poor still kind of (laughs) poor when i first moved to la and it's like you got to pay for parking a lot of times you're concerned like are they gonna like charge you and you know i was just so intimidated i didn't know what to do i mean i didn't even really think i don't even know if i was using internet to the point where i could just look up like mics and stuff but I remember though, if you want to make, if you want to segue into the healthy eating thing, yeah, yeah, let's thing, do it. Let's do it. Um, that first year that I moved here, um, so one of my even, I always feel like I'm a little bit ahead of the curve on things. Even before I moved to LA, um, I had my first raw vegan book, right. and um, that's part of the. Well, that was one of my phases that I went through. Was uh, how do you live in Texas and become a raw vegan? So that's what happened. <laughs> I, I bought the book. Right. I went into out in Texas. We have H E B, and um, one of uh, it's it's like a Ralph's. Okay. And uh, one of the ingredients was simply tamari, and tamari, if you don't know, is just Good. basically a fancy soy sauce. Okay. It's like a organic. Um, I want to say, is that the one from Slobby? Anyways, it's organic, basically. It's an organic soy sauce, and I was like, hey, do you guys have tamari? And they're like, same. Thing. We don't know what that is. Right. Like what? And there was a couple of other. Okay, I was like, maybe I can, you know, figure something else out. Okay, what about this ingredient? They're like, no. So I was like, you know what? And I, the internet was big in that point to where I, I remember getting um, on and looking at a restaurant in Santa Monica. And I was like, right when I moved to L.A., I'm going straight to that restaurant. And, of course, I remember I went there. The food was okay. It was called Revolution in Santa Monica. Revolution. Revolution. Uh. And, well, and then uh, <laughs> I just remember it was really expensive and the food was just okay and right. i'm like okay um and so for a long time what i uh probably right before i moved into my own apartment so when i first moved to la i lived in student housing that was gnarly no shit yeah like I, how so um in uh, the ucl and westwood life life hack if you're poor move to la and get student housing maybe i mean <laughs> if you don't care about living with 21 year olds so if yeah if you're a hungry 21 year old looking to move to la i mean and your budget is you know but it is, I think. I think at that point it was like eight fifty or something a month. Uh huh. To live but, with how many people? Well, okay. So in student, so it's basically this apartment building that's ninety nine percent. I probably uh, more than that. Like I was the one person that didn't go to UCLA, um, or maybe like a graduate who just decided to stay. Um, I was the person. So there was three bedrooms. Two huge bedrooms, so two girls in each of the huge bedrooms, and then one tiny little room, which was the room I rented. Because I didn't want to get burned when I moved out here. And I needed a place where I knew, I was like, there's no way I can afford my own apartment, but I also don't want to get some sketchy roommate who can't 
pay her rent. And now we're both moving back home right. because we got, we burned each other or she burned me, whatever. Um, so the, I, I found this building, um, uh, Maslin Park West. <laughs> I remember it um, on mid, I think it was, uh, I forget the address, but Midvale. And um, I got that room. Yeah. And I'm still friends with all four of those girls oh, on wow. this day. They're amazing. They, they uh, like, I think, what, like, they're, uh, two of them I just got their master's degrees and yeah they're they're amazing so um yeah and then I got my first studio apartment in Hollywood after that and oh and then the point of that was um so I was living there and I would go to Whole Foods and I would just get these um, the salad boxes which Whole Foods in Westwood oh I don't like that one me neither <laughs> yeah well all I would do is I'd fill it up with salad and then I'd eat I basically I, I was almost doing intermittent fasting without even knowing it so I would just eat um Half of the box for lunch. Let me explain. Want to explain what intermittent fasting is? Because some people might not know. I think you should explain it. Because I'm actually not an intermittent fasting person. Okay. Go ahead. I, I, I don't really do it. But yeah. uh, basically, intermittent fasting is when mm. you only eat for like a certain window. Everyone like has their different methods. But um, let's say you eat from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And that's, you only eat during those times. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, most people do it. They're, they're still like eating healthy within that time, but there's no like, I'm, I'm watching, I'm, I can only eat this many. They just eat as much as they can mm -hmm. during that time, but then they don't eat from 6 to 8. So it's like, you know, some do 12 hours, 16 right. hours. And it's supposed to, uh, you know, encourage fat burning and it encourages you to use uh like fat stores for energy and so forth some people swear by it some people it's yeah. you know for me like i don't do intermittent fasting but like mm -hmm. i also just normally just don't eat after a certain time anyway so mm -hmm. it's same thing it's like you kind of do it but not like you're not labeling it okay i have to stop eating. it just works out that way just because i know i feel a certain way if i don't if i stop eating after a certain point then i just feel better in the morning but that's what intermittent fasting is Right. And that's exactly what I was doing. So I'd go and I'd get this box of salad and I'd eat it, uh, half of it for lunch. And then I'd eat the second half for dinner. And that was like all I would eat. And I remember that was the first time um, that I was able to eat my quote unquote dream raw vegan diet. And I did. I lost so much weight. I got so skinny. And I actually felt really good, too, um, uh, because, man, your skin just starts glowing. All the right. weight's coming off or whatever. And um, that was one of the times that I did the quote unquote raw vegan diet, which basically means you don't eat anything above 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Crazy. And it's all um, fruits, vegetables, nuts. You don't cook anything. No, mm. you can dehydrate. Um, I mean, if anything, like maybe like a warm simmer to some vegetables, but you don't want anything like boiling so or anything not, like that. So not your typical comedian's diet. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and you went to Whole Foods, which I love Whole Foods. Right. Um, but like, you know, you go to Mike's and you hear like there's so many comedians that like like to talk shit about Whole Foods because mm -hmm. it's, ex it's expensive. Very. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, those same people are going to buy two, three, four beers a night. Exactly. And it's like, so you're still spending the money. It's just a matter of what do I value that buzz or do I value that? Well, that that feeling of I feel good, my skin looks good, like and stuff like that. That was actually the first time I experienced with not drinking alcohol oh. because you can't be on that diet and right. drink or you'll get blackout wasted unless you're doing drugs or something. But again, that contradicts everything. It like totally cancels out all of that money you're spending on salad. It's just eliminated because you feel like crap the next day. So yeah, it was, it was like really cool. Um, it wasn't, I, I wasn't able to last that long because like once you lose a certain amount of weight, your body just kind of starts craving other nutrients because now... Um, I feel like, I do feel very, um, excuse me, I need water, I'm going to cough. <coughs> Let it out, man. Mm -hmm. Let it out. <laughs> I feel knowledgeable um, yeah, yeah. with health because now I can talk about any diet you want, like vegan. Are you still vegan? Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's... So um, you, you went, because I remember you used to always talk about, what's that restaurant in Santa Monica? It's like in a grocery store or something. Uh, is there like a vegan <laughs> place? Uh, in the Vons or in the pavilions right there? Oh, um, Matthew Kinney's restaurant. What's it called? I don't know. Is it still there? Plant Food and Wine. Okay. But you used to go there all the time. You loved it. You swore by it. Or you used to at least just post about it all the time. Oh, no. I used to work there raw. Oh, okay. In West Hollywood. Raw. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I worked there. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you work at a raw food place. Oh, yeah. And that's when I was actually able to be raw. Um, so I saw being raw. And then when I started working there a few years later, I was actually raw for about two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that then, was very fun. But now you're back on, on <clears throat> our side. So what I will say about the raw diet, though, is um, what happened is um, this is this is big because a lot of people ask me if I'm vegan and I just I just don't talk about it because there is a guilt that you have because you do know it's wrong in your heart. Um, I I told I talked about this in the first podcast. It's like when I like I love barbecue when I Mm -hmm. travel because to me it's like it's a cheat meal. But, like, I don't eat, like, any of the, like, I don't, I'm mm-hmm. not eating the bread or the fries. Like, I'm right. just eating the meat mm-hmm. and then maybe, like, beans or something. But, like, right. it's a mental cheat day because it's, like, you get those tastes and those flavors. And a lot of times, especially, like, in the South, like, in Texas and mm-hmm. places like that, you don't even need sauce because the meats cook so well. So, right. it's, like, I'm just eating meat. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like, you know that bad stuff. Like, but I'm not the one killing the animals. So, like, well, leave me alone. So the way I look at it is, um, so what happened, I was a raw vegan when I met my ex-boyfriend, and my ex-boyfriend was in CrossFit. Oh, we can talk about CrossFit, because he used to be hardcore CrossFit, too. I'm, I still support it, though. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And the, and the reason why, just to quickly mention on, the, on it, the reason why I support it is because if you go into a CrossFit class and give 50%, you're, you're going to get a better workout than you going to the gym by yourself if you don't know what you're doing. Correct. You know, so if you literally just go in there and kind of, like, go through the movements, like, on the lightest weight... And then if you walk the distance that they tell you to walk, like, it's a great workout. And I, uh-huh. I used to tell people I treated like PE class. No one really wanted to go to PE class unless you were a boy and right. really athletic. But most girls are like, oh, man, I'm going to get sweaty. But you just show up right. and you participate. And it's yeah. that is how I treated it. And I was the best shape I've ever been in my life. So, um, um, so okay, this is good, and maybe we'll get off on a tangent. But mm-hmm. so you did do CrossFit for how long? Would you say three years? And mm-hmm. if you you guys can't see unless you're watching, <laughs> but she looks like a girl still because mm-hmm. that's a thing I know that a lot of women and I deal with all the time is like women are always afraid of getting bulky. To me, that's so insulting to so, people for, for sure. Well, no, no, it's insulting to the people who try so hard. To look like that. Like, people think, oh, uh, I'm going to do, like, two workouts and get bulky. It's like they don't understand that a lot of those women, like, kind of want to look like that. Yeah, exactly. And and they don't understand how hard it is to look like that. It's not just about picking up the weights. Like, you can lift weights and still have a feminine body. Absolutely. You can lift heavy weights and still have a feminine body. Yeah, and and I – exactly. And uh, I did both. And I will say it is – it is easiest, but it's so boring to do the lightweight and super high reps. Yeah. It's so boring. Like, okay, three sets of 25. Like, no one wants to do that. You know, no. so that's why I think a lot of people do get addicted to CrossFit because it is that community. For sure. You know, 100%. you used to show up and you know people and it's just, it's great. Like hanging out with your, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, if you go enough to a box, that's what they mm-hmm. call like mm-hmm. the CrossFit places. Mm-hmm. It's like you get to know everybody there. And exactly. like you kind of everyone's rooting for each other. Right. So like like for me, like I don't love CrossFit. Um it's just not my it it, it isn't my style. I just don't I just don't like I have my own program that I follow. Um, but I get the community sense because like for some people Walking into a gym is intimidating. Oh, and, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're and bored, you're embarrassed. Yeah. If you don't know how a machine works, you're not going to ask for help. So you're just going to skip that machine. And it's like, you know, you're just wandering around looking at your cell phone, maybe walking incline on a treadmill for 20 minutes, maybe Boring. doing a few like, you know, dumbbell reps because that's all you're not intimidated to pick up. And it's like, yeah, that's it. And so to get back to the point about um, my ex is, so oh, yeah, yeah. I was I was working at that raw food restaurant uh-huh. and he um, he asked me out and then we started dating and he was like you should come to this class the CrossFit class with me and I I grew up running track and playing basketball <laughs> basketball <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I was like absolutely I would love to and I just remember it was exhilarating and yeah. I was like man and they even had like a track day at that box huh. so I was like oh man I love track and then you know. It was it wasn't a lot of bar movements at that time like um the barbell it was just like wall balls and box jumps and I remember I was sore and I felt amazing. Now he's the one who said, "Hey, if you really want to do this with me, maybe you should consider um putting some more like um animal protein into your diet." Ooh. And um 
Ooh. Which is crazy. I will say, um, I have a lot to say about <laughs> animal protein um, and the vegan diet, but I will say the one craziest thing that we ever did is we took shots of raw bison liver. <laughs> Sound like a party, Alex? Raw bison bad. liver? <laughs> raw. Wait, what'd you say? Oh, I thought you said it sounded like a penis party. <laughs> no, let me tell you. I Like liquefied? No. Or like... Sliced, put in our mouth and hey. swallowed it. Let me tell you what. I went into the CrossFit that di- afternoon. Uh-huh. I felt like a monster. Really? An absolute monster. Another thing that did it to me on the raw vegan side, though, is um, if you guys have never experim- um, experimented or have ever heard of... The mushroom cordyceps, uh-huh. that was another one that I um, ate. And I remember running, and I could literally feel more ox- oxygen really? going into my lungs. So, yeah, unfortunately, God bless, uh, raw bison liver, which is super <laughs> expensive and super hard to find. Like, nobody goes to the butcher no. saying, do you have any bison liver? Fresh, though, because I'm not going to cook it. Um, or um, cordyceps, which is also super expensive. Where did expensive. you get Bison liver online black market. No, oh, <laughs> it definitely wasn't the black market. <laughs> but uh, like maybe I don't th- know. No, it, uh, they have it on certain websites, and okay. they'll uh, they deliver it. Uh huh. Frozen and yeah. Shut um, up. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. So I've had like bison meat, and it's fine. It's you know. So that definitely wasn't the first um, meat that I introduced into my diet. But see, this is how it all happened. I was like, you know what? Um, when I first went uh, vegan. I was I was only about the raw diet. I wasn't about the whole vegan right. movement. Yeah, I was just like I because I always when I whenever I ate soy or those microwave dinners or those vegan pizzas, I never felt good. And if anything, I felt like I was gaining weight. Uh-huh. Eating a lot of that that they call it vegan junk food, which it is vegan junk food. And right. and, and that that was my problem with the vegan community because uh, they'll they'll make this flat statement saying. Meat is bad for you. Right. You know, it's like processed meat is bad for you. There's processed a lot, anything is bad for you. There, exactly. There's yeah. a lot. There's a huge difference between a hot dog and raw bison liver <laughs> or just grass-fed meat, period. Right. Like, if you haven't even, like, done the research behind grass-fed meat, like, it's huge. Um, and that's where all the problems are happening. And you can say we can have the same conversation about right. gluten, about, um, you know, sugar, about uh, GMO, everything. Um, but... And, and I didn't like that. Is I, I'd see all these vegan pages saying, like, oh, meat causes cancer. It's like, no, hot dogs yeah. cause cancer. Fucking cell phones and microwaves and exactly. all kinds of other things cause cancer. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I'm going to grab my purse really fast. She's grabbing her purse. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's in your purse? Kleenex. Oh, <laughs> like, what the hell is she about to pull out right now? <laughs> um, okay, so I think it's interesting that you went vegan and then you went back because I think a lot of people don't do that normally um but i i still am the biggest fan though of um raw vegan food though i'm just poor honestly um if i if i was ever a celebrity and i had money um i would definitely invest in i would probably be super 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 high raw diet and um so I would still be more vegan than most people uh, in the world, um, but and then I'd eat very, 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 very small amounts of like super expensive organic, you know, free range, non GMO, grass fed meat. But then most of my diet would be like a, a raw diet. Okay. But I'm just poor, yeah. so um, I right now like I actually some on some days eat a nice cup of noodles really? <laughs> if i have to well only because like if it's an absolute like like actual cup of noodles or oh, like yeah. like homemade version no um so, sometimes like and and that's only because um because i feel so knowledgeable i'm also big in the fasting world uh-huh. like i think you can s- s- like reverse so much and heal your body by like water fasting like, like i've actually long? water fasted for eight days before when you say water fast, it's like you only drink water or you don't drink water? Only water. That's it? Only. Just nothing water else. Okay, and can I explain to people the difference between fasting and starving? Yes. Okay, the difference between fasting and starving is fasting is nothing. Starving is what these 
forgive me, like um, anorexic people might do this or just people in general who like have eating, like who don't want to eat a lot. If you wake up and let's say I woke up and I ate that cup of noodles yeah. and that's all I had, that's starving because right. you're putting just a little bit of amounts of food in your body. Or maybe like throughout the day I was like picking on like crackers and I'm just so under caloried. That's starving. Fasting is when you finally get your body in this, like it goes like past the starving, like shock, and then boom, now it's used to nothing going in your body. That's why fasting can be so dangerous if you don't do it properly right. and you don't break your fast properly because now your body is in this fasting mode and you're not breaking it properly. And the way you break a fast properly breakfast is, a no, it's um, breakfast. broth. You have to have broth. Like if, like yeah. if you ever didn't eat, um, like for like, let's say you even did a four day fast, you have to make vegetable broth and then sip that and then slowly start putting it into your body. I'm good. Yeah, you don't need to. And yeah. honestly, I don't think a lot of people need. Well, not and most people don't have the discipline to do that. Well, most a, that that's why we did this podcast is because mm-hmm. most comics. I literally have a joke have. now <laughs> that says I'm trying to gain weight because I want to be funnier. Uh, that's, that is, I find people like always ask me like, uh, like, oh, do you talk about like the gym, like all the, all the weird people at the gym when you're doing stand up? And I'm like, I really can't because, uh, in LA, like in LA or like a big city, you Mm -hmm. can do like kind of some gym references and for the most part, the audiences are healthy. They get what the gym is. But like, if I go to like Oklahoma or... Mm -hmm. Somewhere like that, mm-hmm. I can't be like you guys are at the gym, right? Because like it'll, like, right? It'll be quiet, like and people are mm-hmm. like, no, we don't work out, mm-hmm. like we don't. What's 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 the gym? Like those are the, the people that are circling around the, an empty, half empty parking lot, looking for the closer parking the spot. The worst at the gym. Like in LA, if we see a spot that's literally half a mile away, we're like, oh my god, parking! Yeah, holy crap! And then they're like, there will be. 15 spaces, but they're going to keep circling because they want to be a little bit closer to the entrance. I park as far as my girlfriend gets mad, and I'm just like, dude, let's just park and walk. Because, like, one, I mean, a number of reasons, but, like, let's say you go to a store or something, the parking spaces further away are going to be easier to find. And because they're e- there's less people parking in the back of the parking lot, you're going to be less likely to get your door dinged because mm-hmm. you, someone's probably not going to park next to you. Because I used to always get dinged, and it's like, oh, yeah. I'm just going to start parking farther away, away from cars. No one's going to ding my car. Mm -hmm. Uh, But two, like in L.A., parking's retarded. I can't say retarded. (laughs) Sorry. Good save, good save. (laughs) Parking is expensive. People charge for parking. So like, like, for example, when I go to the comedy store, I park on La Cienega, which is the street that the comedy store is off of, if mm-hmm. you guys aren't familiar. Um, and I walk up that hill because I usually park right below Fountain. Mm-hmm. And there's usually free parking after, uh, like, whatever, after the, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's after 6 or something, you can park on that street. Right. And I'll walk a half a mile because I'm not paying. Parking around the comedy store, it's like $15 at the cheapest, mm-hmm. $20. Like, that's stupid. Mm-hmm. And uh, same thing, like, when I go to Dodger games, like, I walk, like, over a half a mile because parking at Dodger Stadium, the cheapest parking is $25. Mm-hmm. And it's like I go to a lot of Dodge. It's it's just whatever. Yeah, I, I feel like that on my street now. The street that I live on, I literally walk down, um, and then uh, I live very close to Melrose, uh-huh. and I'll see at the end of the street ten dollar parking, and I'm Stupid. like, wow, I'm so lucky, you yeah, because I have a parking permit now, thank God. But I'm like, geez, this, this, what an expensive neighborhood. It's the worst. And then yeah. like there's like street parking or like street sweeping, and it's like mm-hmm. if you if. if here, we, I did this uh, with the girls last week. Um, mm-hmm. Give some advice to people that might be considering a career in, in the entertainment industry that don't live in L.A. that are thinking about moving to L.A. Just give them some advice. Any any advice? Um, come with money. Um, definitely come with money. Great um, advice. Because... You pay for everything here. Well, and, and even, honestly, you want to be able to invest in yourself a little bit. Like, you might not come with a headshot, you know? How much do headshots cost? Uh, and, you know, <laughs> anywhere between, you're, you can find them maybe, like, if you're super photogenic, you can go the cheap route, and or maybe one of your, and that's another thing, if you're, if you have money to get into an acting class, sometimes yeah. you'll have amateur like your classmates might be an amateur photographer. Maybe I've taken yeah. a few people's headshots just out of like trying, you know. And um, I did those for free, but they're not good. Um, so maybe like two fifty, all the way up to a thousand dollars, you know. Crazy. And that's just for, for headshots. Like, yeah, and that's for like three looks, maybe. Yeah. And I would highly recommend um, I if you're in acting or comedy, like I'm um, taking a class. Oh my god, let me tell this story. I went to the Hollywood Improv. Um, 
No, no, no. Uh, the Laugh Factory open mic the other day. It's a raffle. You get, you pay like almost about four or five bucks to to do two minutes. And oh, wait. So you didn't wait in line. You put your name in to get to the other part. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah, yeah, I got I got picked first too. Actually, oh, it was really cool. juicy. And all, but all you win is a four minute spot the next week. Okay. So it's not even like you're. If you win, you get. Obviously, they know you, which is great. But it's not like you're booking a spot like um like flappers. At least at the flappers audition, you book a spot. You know, right. I've done that too, which is cool. Um, this poor kid goes up there and then is he's at the Laugh Factory audition. Yeah, and he yeah. starts stuttering, and uh, he. He goes, I'm so sorry, man. I messed it up. I drove here all the way from San Diego. I'm like, bro, this isn't like uh, America's yeah. <laughs> got to- <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of is. But it could be. Okay. He drove from but, San Diego. It's not that far, by the way. San Diego's like two hours. No, away, but so. I, I will <laughs> give props to the host because he said, hey, man, I just want to let you know there's a lot of mics in San Diego. Like, yeah. basically, get your two minutes solid yeah, yeah, yeah. and then drive up here yeah for there that are, there are so many mics san diego has a huge com- there's like five yeah, it's not like he was driving like from pacoima clubs. or right. something like you know he was driving from another major even city in pacoima. Or, or even stop at the long beach laugh factory i'm sure they have something similar there or i don't just... think they have a mic there oh, it was on mic okay okay fair enough but i'm just saying like i don't think so we can um, cross-reference but so um so have money have money have money um, so and, you can, and if you're, if you don't, if you like, didn't, you know, and unfortunately, TV acting and theater acting. So I get it. You were probably the star of your high school or whatever. But like, it, it does help to invest in like maybe a non-camera class or an audition class or a scene study class. And if you do scene study, I would say only do it for a short time because scene study is, in my opinion, more helpful for like working actors. Correct. Because you know you could just. Like, you know, practice and practice and practice. I mean, you might not get a break, you know, for years. Ever. Yeah. You're practicing. Or ever. And not even have, you, don't, you might not even have an agent. Or if you do, they might not even be sending you out. So here you are, like, super well rehearsed. Mm-hmm. Ready, which is... Ready, which is good. You should be prepared always. But which is why commercial classes might be a better... Um, they, they have audition commercial classes, cold reading classes. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, those are all so expensive. The cheapest class that you're going to find is maybe, like... Maybe a one day workshop for yeah. like ninety nine, if that. You're and gonna then, spend a few hundred bucks. Yeah. And by the way, cold reading is not reading in the cold. <laughs> it's, it's getting it's getting like the commercial, the script right when you show up, and then you have to work. You have a few minutes, maybe five, ten minutes. You know, like they they make it so that you are like mimicking what an audition setting is like. Yeah. You know, so when you go to a commercial audition, a lot of times you don't have the sides ahead of time, so you show up. And then they give you the things and you read them and then it's your turn, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes later. So the cold reading class kind of gets you prepared for that environment, going in and just reading something like right off the bat and being able to do something with it and get booked. Which is super helpful because let me tell you, you're going to be nervous in class. So you can only imagine how nervous you're going to be in an audition. Okay. So that, that's one thing. Oh, what's my next one? Um, Do you pay to be on like, like the casting websites? Um, uh, not currently, but I, I, I think that they're helpful because even yeah. if you're auditioning for like a student film or something like that, like that's all experience. Practice. You know, like you, and, and don't be above doing that. I mean, and you never know which one. Of, I mean, first of all, if it's a USC student film, you yeah. never know which one of these things is going to go viral. For sure. You know, so don't, you don't don't be above that. Or you don't know like which one of those kids is going to end up being the next, you know, yeah, Sophia Coppola or something. Exactly. You just never know. That's why you um, have. To, that's why if I could give something, I mean, we we always give advice, um, but uh, just be nice to everybody mm-hmm. because you never know. I don't care. It, I, you, be nice to people. Just be. You should be nice anyway. But especially mm-hmm. in this town, oh, yeah. not someone that you went you met. I don't know. Just be nice to people because so many so many people I've met. And just, like, I'm nice. I have a little know. anecdote. That's a good example of what you're trying oh, to say. Yeah. Like, my My girlfriend um, ordered, she's a property manager, and she ordered mailboxes for her building. They were the wrong color. And the lady was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And she was like, no, it's okay. It's, you know, it doesn't look that bad. And she was like, oh, my God, you're being so nice. She was like, who are you? She's like, what do you know? What do you do? She was like, um, she, and she asked her, do you like comedy? 
Uh-huh. And she was like, I actually did a comedy show last night. She's like, you're a comedian? And her um, son's a booker. Exactly. Boom. You Just see? like that. Yeah. I met, like, you know, at the, I met this lady training and, you know, just always friendly. And she works for a big management company. Mm. So she's like, when you fin- I shot a special a couple months ago. Um, she's like, when you finish it, like, I'll show it to the people. It's a big management company. And I mean, mm-hmm. it, nothing might ever happen, but like, be, in being nice to her, not knowing, I didn't know anything about her, mm-hmm. it opened up. A, so just be nice to people. That's like the main, like, because people are going to be assholes. People are going to be nice to you because they want some. I just nice to people, period, because you just never know. That, and yeah, and I'm, listen, I'm nobody yet, but Neither I, one of us. but my um, friends, and thank you, Peter, they love doing the shows that oh, you get thanks. us on. They are obsessed so that they think it's amazing just to be on those stages because it's not easy to get on the stages that we're getting on. It's true. And um, it's so true. And uh, one of my buddies who I was booking was mean to me lately. And guess what? I'm never going to ask him to do another one of those Uh-oh. shows because uh, <laughs> it was, yeah, he it was, it him. was just really, Uh oh. And, and this has actually happened to me a couple times this year where it's like, it's not what you say, um, but how you say it. It's like, uh-huh. if I, if I ask you for a favor, don't. Don't say, well, what's in it for me? Just right. say, I can't do it. Like, no, I'm sorry, I'm busy. Yeah. You know, no, well, well what are you, you going to do for me? Like, nothing. How about that? Right. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything for you. And like, that sucks too because uh, yeah. I've, uh, I've noticed that, uh, I, mean, I mean, in anything, but like, especially like in the industry when a lot of stuff is just about networking, mm-hmm. um, I have a kind of like a life coach, I guess. And one of the things mm. that they've been talking about is um, not being afraid to ask for things. Mm-hmm. Ask for what you want, or you might not get it. And if you yeah. ask for it, then you might get it. Exactly. Um, but it's when things like that happen that makes you not want to ask for something because you feel like if I ask for this, then this person's going to want, you know, something in return. And then it makes you not want to ask when you still need to be able to ask for those things. You know what I mean? Right. So it sucks. It's like a double edged sword because, like, sometimes you don't want to ask for things because you don't want someone to think that they. You owe them something back, but then at the same time, you have to ask for things. So and and that's weird. what made me upset. This is like, because yeah. I, I had done things for that person. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. Damn. I know. Ew, gross. I'm so sorry. It's <laughs> almost gone. It's been like, this is like the last day, I hope. But, um, because you know, it's really crappy when you don't feel sick anymore, but it's just like there. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways. So, um, yeah, and that's the thing is like, I, I had done things for that person. So now it's like, well, great. No, I don't have to do anything for you anymore. Because the, the really sad part about it is I wasn't even being serious oh. at, like, what I was asking for. And um, then they just were kind of rude about it. And I was like, mm, black, blacklisted. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, I've mm-hmm. made a lot of friends in comedy and I've lost a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you, it's just, <laughs> it is what it is, man, you know. Um, let's do this fun thing really quick. Sure. Um, so every t- everybody that comes on, I ask them a series of questions. Yeah, let's do it. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. Okay. But there is. Okay. Um, okay so question number one: In um, sync or Backstreet Boys? In sync. Oh, that's a good answer. That's always the right answer. In sync is correct. Okay. Question number two: uh, Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera? Britney Spears. Look at Crystal. She's on top of it. Uh, it gets a little bit more uh, um, crunchy peanut butter or creamy peanut butter? Crunchy. Three for three. Um, <laughs> and this one's just for fun. Uh, b- toilet paper roll over? Over. Or under? Over. Oh, uh, see, three for four. Not bad. That's a good Over. Day, yeah. Oh, my God. Who wants to, like, you have to do this. What am I, juggling balls, like, yeah. to look for that flap when it's just right there? It's like, whoop, rip. It done. just looks better. No. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's it's about comfortability. Like, Do you ever see, uh, is it Lethal Weapon 2? When uh, he's on the toilet, and then he pulls the thing down, and it says, like, I think it says bang, you're dead or something, but there's a bomb on the toilet, so he can't get off the toilet, and then Mel Gibson's got to come and rescue him. No, I yeah. haven't seen that one. That's hilarious. But he wouldn't have been able to do that if it was over. Like, he never mm-hmm. would have read it, and then he would have wiped, and he would have died, and then the movie would have been over. But 
this one under in case you want to leave a message for somebody. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, as a as a comic, do you mm-hmm. find that you can talk about like do you do you get embarrassed? Because I'm I'm someone like you you know we follow each other on social media, but like I'm always at the gym and mm-hmm. trying to just share that with people because it's part of my it's just part of my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But I hope to motivate others because I know that a lot of people um, use it as an use like their busy schedule as an excuse as to why they might mm-hmm. let themselves go and whatnot. And mm-hmm. I'm not passing judgment, but what I try to just show is that like hey i'm up at six o'clock or i I just did a show i had i was up until midnight but i'm still up at the gym getting it over with getting that workout in because it's Mm -hmm. just gonna help me be healthier have more energy and so forth um so i don't know what my question was gonna oh um how do you feel about like uh do you are you do you get like embarrassed to post stuff like that or like not at all yeah no and um well, a lot of people do call me out though because I don't post like um like when I'm eating healthy. I actually just started eating healthy again um two days ago. What because, have you been doing? Well, um I I've just been eating moderately uh-huh. and not necessarily looking or paying attention to my macros so much. Macros. Yeah. How many comics do you think pay attention to macros? Percentage. Like two percent. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean two percent could probably even explain what macros are. <laughs> also probably or true. even how to find out what their <laughs> macros should be. I mean I struggle with it. Right. Like, you know, I, I don't uh I don't even have the discipline to put into my if you don't have a my fitness pal. <laughs> um oh, that's but, a good app. It's a good app. Yeah, you know, because yeah. at, at least if you want to like see what the macros of something that you're about yeah. to eat is, um you no, know, so like I I haven't when I say not paying attention, it means, you know, like Maybe I'll eat like a poke bowl, um, and then you know, obviously that is goes into my macros and it's healthy. Um, and when I do get pokey, it's usually just salad. Um, and um, but if I, you know, later on in the day, just so happen to be at work and I look in the cabinet and there's a cup of ramen noodles, you know, I'm not above eating that right now because I also know, again, like I said, if I ever looked in the mirror, um, and I and lately it has been like that because I hadn't really super been on top of it since the end of last year before I went on that trip to Asia. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, you slowly start seeing your body start to go. Um, but luckily, because like I said, I feel like I have that skill, um, I'm able to bounce back. And that's the right. hard part. It's having the discipline. It's always that first week that's like, okay, oh, the sugar withdrawals. Oh, can I talk about that really fast? Yeah. Um, I was going to talk about talk how... Talk about whatever you want. I was going to talk about how I found it acceptable to go from, like, the raw vegan to the paleo diet. So if you guys don't know what candida or candidia is, it's basically something that um, it's like a yeast in your body that gets fed and it causes, like, um, brain fog and um, just uh, you get – I was starting to get, like, these rashes on my armpits. And, yeah, it's – it's basically an overgrowth of, like, this yeast thing. And you get it from too much sugar. Well, you remember when I said the first time I did raw vegan, I was just eating box salads? Yeah, yeah. Well, when I was working at that restaurant, I was eating a lot of gourmet raw vegan, which is maple syrup. Aga- uh, we didn't uh, do agave, but it was um, honey. Oh, my God. So much honey, uh-huh. a lot of fruits, and just so much sugar. Right. It still looked pretty good. I really did. Um, I remember, like, I just loved taking pictures and, like, my bikinis. Like, oh, my God, I look amazing. But I was very cloudy in the mind. Um, I will say I've quit drinking alcohol a couple of times. Um, I've, I've been on some crazy diets, but there was, I've never felt a crazier withdrawal than stop than not eating sugar. Yeah. I literally felt like Leonardo DiCaprio on basketball diaries. If you don't know what that is, (laughs) watch it. It's the heroin withdrawal scene. I was a crazy person. Is that the movie where he has uh, sex with another man too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It sure. it <laughs> was bizarre. And you get like headaches behind your in behind your eye. And it like was eye. just like a like a I need it. Yeah. I'm like please, like let me and um so you really have to go off of it slowly. I try to cold turkey because I feel yeah. home. I'm so good at this. Like I'm I'm I do feel like that's the best way to do it though. I did it yeah. I did it uh God. Seven. What this is two thousand. So yeah, two thousand twelve. I read this book mm-hmm. uh, by Tim mm-hmm. Grover. Shout out to Tim Grover. Uh, he's the guy. He used to train Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. And it's this book called Relentless. And 
I thought it was like going to help you like work out harder or whatever, but it's more like a mental book. Okay. Like just how to make sacrifices. And it was exactly the, it was the perfect book that I needed to read um, right when I started stand up. Mm-hmm. Because oh, if, you, nice. if you're serious about stand up, like you have to be willing to sacrifice a lot of shit. Money, oh being, money being one of them. Uh, but like <laughs> it, it helped me like, Personal it helped me. Life. It just it just helped me with some like I'm like okay yeah I'm gonna be tired tomorrow morning but I'm at the show like I have to do the show I have to get on more shows like it it really said but one of the things he talks about is how with his athletes right when they first start training he makes them give up sugar mm-hmm. like completely he gives them a list of things they can eat and what they oh, can eat God. and you know most athletes you know if you're an athlete I was an athlete you don't really pay attention to what you eat mm-hmm. for a long time because you're just burning so much calories. You cal- don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to think about it. But when he's working with him, it's it's more of a mental thing. Like he wants to let them know that he's in control, but also how your body operates when it's not getting sugar and stuff like that. Like it's actually more efficient when you're putting the right things into your body. And he mm-hmm. talks about like the So I was like, I got to try this. And I did it. And it was tough, man. But I, I had to, I just owed it to myself to just see if I could do it. And now, I mean, like, I eat sugar kind of, but like, I don't really eat that much sugar. But it's also a lot different, in my opinion, too, when I was essentially a heroin addict because, like I said, that diet, yeah. I was waking up and eating raw vegan pie for breakfast. Oh, yeah. So from good. going from that, and, and I still try to do it as a vegan because I was like, how do I eat this diet? You know, like just eating like salads and um, like nuts and um, I was ha- doing all these like supplements which is why I will say when I tried the paleo diet, which is still a plant-based diet. I want to make yeah, that yeah. very clear. People think paleo people are just eating like pounds of bacon and, you know, like steak. And no, like you're eating huge salads and maybe some fruits right. or whatever and nuts. You're eating natural sugars though, not like that's the big thing. Yeah, just, just fruits and like... Stuff I, from nature. Exactly. And, um, and then small amounts of meat, you know, obviously the... I mean, like, I think, like, Tom Brady is one of those people who is, uh, has that similar to a paleo uh-huh. diet. Like, his diet's gnarly. He doesn't eat tomatoes yeah. at all. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I've, or, I've heard the science behind yeah. that, which is fine. The inflammation and stuff. Yeah. I've, I'm like, oh. but he's got, like, six Super Bowl rings, so who am I to argue with Tom Brady? No, they're both beautiful. And Him and his wife are beautiful, yeah. so... But yeah, anyway, so like that's another thing that I hear, like, oh, like, that's not plant-based. No, like, a plant-based diet doesn't necessarily equal... Because I, I tell that to people now, like if I want to don't, if I don't want to fight a vegan about not being vegan anymore, I just say I'm plant based, you know, like, because it's not like I ever gave up leather. It's not like I sold my car for a leaf, you <laughs> right, know what I mean? True. So. So what do you do? Uh, how often do you work out? Um, lately, a couple times a week only. Lately, okay. yeah. But uh, I'm uh, so my ex boyfriend is actually moving back to Orange County. And as soon as he moves, I'm going to join the CrossFit gym that he's at now. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah, he, I, I he don't He lives wanna... here now. Yeah. When, when, when we broke up in Orange County, I stayed because I went back to college and I wanted to finish the semester. And then he, when the lease was up, he moved back to L.A. And I was like, uh-huh, I told you you weren't going to like Orange County. But he is actually going to move back. Okay. So that's cool. Um, it's so weird when we do that and break. Like, I, I, like, walked away from a whole part of my life when my ex and I broke up. Mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. Just the basketball ex mm-hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. yeah just because i was like you know when you're with someone for a long time you, there's this you go places and, mm-hmm. and then every time you go there afterwards you're like oh this is where i used to go with her or him or whatever and so it's like i was like you know what that part of my life is done like i don't even go down like i used to, lo- I used to live in hermosa beach mm-hmm. i used to love it down there but once we broke up i was like that part of my life's over I don't need to go back down there again. Who wants to live there anyways? It's pretty cool, I will say. Really? Very safe. I feel the same way about Costa Mesa. I mean, I'm sure it's very similar. Oh, my God. Costa Mesa. There's money. Yeah. There's, there's mm-hmm. white people. It's safe. White people. <laughs> oh my God. Generally, w- places where there's money and white people, it's usually pretty safe. Yeah. Like, this is like, like in, in Newport Beach. <laughs> yeah. Like, in Hermosa Beach, like, uh, I remember uh, this girl got attacked by, like, this guy. And, like, everybody knew about it. Did you hear about that one girl that mm-hmm. got attacked? And they were like, oh, like a girl got attacked? Or like we live in LA, like someone's literally probably getting attacked right now. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I mean but like I need to be here, obviously. So. Right. Um, oh, okay. Let's, uh, before we, we got to wrap it up, um, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, I'm so super sh- excited to be back at the Ice House on May 2nd. That's right. Yeah. So when they hear this, that'll mm-hmm. be the week of that 
show. Oh, really? Yeah, so Juicy. come see us at the Ice House on Thursday, May 2nd. Oh, yes. Please um, do. Um, social media handles? Yes, Crystal, K-R-Y-S-T-L-E, chats, C-H-A-T-S, like chit-chat. Uh -huh. And that's my Instagram and my Twitter, which is basically all I really use. I, I mainly use Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, so. Our, it's our generation And now. it's my website. Mm -hmm. That's your website? Mm -hmm. CrystalChats.com. Crystal mm -hmm. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to plug? That's all I have for now, really. Um, I, I've been so busy just trying to move here. Yeah. And I'm so happy about it. I'm glad it. you moved back. Yeah. Yeah, Thank I see you at the mics and all the time. It's, uh, yeah, I'm grinding. I'm just trying to get, you know, regular shows going and oh. stuff. Um, cause I, I've been doing, I was doing so many shows in Orange County, Orange County, and I'm slowly like saying, I can't anymore, guys. Yeah. And then now I can finally like, you know, start meeting people again and being like, okay, hi, I'm a comedian and I'm in LA now. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, too. Exactly. And it sucks. You had to put yourself out there, though. You just have to. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can't. Uh, and yeah, and that's another thing is, ladies, like if you if, or gentlemen, if you move here, like you don't have to go out with people who have shows. That happened to me the other day. It's like I could, he like had a show, and I could tell like he's like, "Oh, do you want to have a drink?" It's like, no, I don't have to have a drink with you if you think I like. <laughs> I'm not thirsty to get on your show, bro. Like, no, <laughs> you can either book me or like never book me. But or not, yeah. If I if I dated or accepted even half of the comedians that asked me to grab a drink, I would have quit comedy like yesterday just because. I, I don't think I've ever had a girl ask me for a drink. <laughs> there you go. That's it's girl. girls. It's That's ladies. A girl thing. Guys are assholes. We, <laughs> we all know that. I'm sorry. I apologize on our behalf. Um, yeah, so we're going to be at the Ice House on May 2nd because that's when you guys will hear this. Yay. Um, thanks for listening or Absolutely. watching. Um, no matter what you do, comedy, acting, whatever, construction, just make your health and fitness a priority. Um, I do it for vanity reasons, but also because it helps me feel good and it helps me deal with shit. So you guys will see. Uh, follow me on social media, which if you're listening to this, you probably already do. But if mm -hmm. you don't, because uh, maybe someone is listening because yeah. they are your fans of you. I'm on social media, all the platforms, at Peter Sirs, Instagram, Twitter. Um, listen to this podcast. If you, if, well, you probably listen to it if you hear me. Um, <laughs> go on iTunes, rate it, um, You know, give it stars, comment. It actually helps uh, build the popularity and make, it, uh, make more people see it organically. So if you guys can do that. That would be great. That would help us out. And then what's what you have a podcast also. Mine is Crystal Chats. Um, Perfect. It's a Crystal, Ch Crystal Chats podcast, and it's on my website. Um, I'll start making it prettier. It's not on iTunes though. Maybe you can like you know show me how to do that and stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a meeting to like get it on there. So yeah. Do it, buddy. Can't wait. Um, well, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys next time on the camera ads. Ten pounds. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you. <laughs>